Uh, hey everybody, I'm Mark Walters of BigFanboy.com here once again at the Dallas International Film Festival with the very lovely Kat Candler. And thank you so much for uh, coming back. I mean, you were just here a year ago, but but uh, it's it's such a celebratory event because uh, we saw the short film Hellion, and now we get to see the feature film Hellion. And uh, I really enjoyed this yesterday. Thank you. It was uh, I missed it at South by Southwest, so I was yeah. so glad that it came here. And um, uh, just so many great things to say about this. Uh, I enjoyed your Q&A as well yesterday and, and getting a chance to see the kids and what they're really like, you know, is always fun. Um, talk about that journey of taking this from short film to feature film. And, yeah. And was that really daunting? I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that the, the idea of that is great, but mm -hmm. the reality of it, I'm, assu I'm assuming there's a lot of challenges involved with something like that. Yeah, I mean, the funny thing is, is that when I made the short film, I had no expectations whatsoever that we would ever make a feature. I literally, so I teach at UT, so my students are always making stuff, and it was, I hadn't made anything in a while, and I was just like, why are they always making stuff? Why am I not always making stuff? So um, I had this little script. Originally, it was called Faker, which is a terrible name for the short, but, um, I, and Kelly Williams, who my producer, who was just leaving the Austin Film Festival and wanting to produce, and so I took him the script and I was like, "Hey, you want to make something this summer and go like play again on the playground?" And um, and he was like, "Yeah." And so, no expectations. Made the short film, wrapped, and then I just I love these characters and I love this world and I love setting fires. And so um, he, <laughs> someone mentioned they thought that the film or the world took place in Southeast Texas and yeah. Refinery Town. And so Kelly's like, I actually grew up there. And so he started taking me down to these kind of field trips to Southeast Texas. And I literally would sit in barber shops and listen to refinery workers coming in and out. And I would go visit the alternative schools and the boot camps and talk to CPS officers and just kind of started living and breathing this Southeast Texas, which I'd never been to before and I hadn't seen on screen really outside of Urban Cowboy. And I just was, I fell in love with that that place and wanted to see it as a character on screen and just expanded the story and then yeah the last two years have been pretty pretty amazing for us and it's been a pretty special smooth journey because the film the short film got into Sundance and then from there Kelly got into the creative producers lab at Sundance and uh, I, I don't know it was just everything strangely kind of magically fell into place with a lot of tears and a lot of heartache along the way mm -hmm. um but yeah two years later it's like wow you made a movie <laughs> and it's gonna play in theaters which is like the holy grail you know i don't know it's been good it's an interesting story too about finding josh mm -hmm. because he his buddy was in the short yeah. And, and so, so talk a little bit about that, about how, like, like, cause the buddy didn't want to do films. No. And so he, no. but he was the reason that Josh got kind of pushed in into that. Yeah. Um, yeah. so Tommy, who was in the short, he plays the oldest boy in the short film. Um, a friend of ours, Summer Shelton was casting a movie called Little Accidents that played here as well. Mm -hmm. So they were looking for the same Southern 14 year old boy and she got interested in Tommy from the short and then started investigating him online and found these YouTube videos that Tommy and Josh made and they're really I mean they're cute silly videos like I think I saw a bad detective which is them out by their pool like with little guns <laughs> and cowboy hats and stuff and um, but she was like you gotta check out this other kid there's something really special about him and so I watched I think bad detective and uh, and brought him in and it was you know he had the look and I was like please God let him open his mouth and it'd be brilliant and he did and he was just this real honest kid who was just a kid and uh and then I brought him out to LA a few months later to read with Aaron and I'm like please god don't let him freeze up or like get nervous and he just it was just yeah once they both started the chemistry was just kind of undeniable when they started working together well it seems like the kids I mean in the movie they're they're very they go to some really dark places mm -hmm. and and you know Josh especially has to kind of maintain that uh disconnected sort of feel but uh I, I think these guys by seeing them last night they're goofballs aren't they yeah. like like were they were they goofballs on set like did you have to try to rein them in every now and then yeah but i'm a goofball too yeah, so kind of i would sometimes ball. get brought into it um but yeah i mean there were there were definitely times there, there, 
each of them sort of had their scenes. That was like, they owned that scene. And there's one scene in particular that Dalton, uh, who plays Lance, owns. And it was a really hard scene to shoot. And it was just uh, stressful and a lot of things to cover. And I remember Dalton, the other kids were like cracking up a little bit. And he was the one who's like, you guys got to take was this seriously. Was that the scene kind of towards the end? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I yeah, know and it I was, know what scene you're talking about. It was his scene, you know, and when the other boys were... Yeah, he's really powerful in that. He, yeah, yeah, and he had never acted before. Wow. It's just so... I know, I'm so proud of these boys. They just... They really owned it. And it, it's funny because they don't think they quite knew what they were getting into when mm -hmm. I first cast them. Because I was just this scrappy girl going across Texas, like, trying to find these boys. And, you know, no big production, anything. Just me and, like, a little flip cam or something and my, my assistant... And uh, when they got on set with like Aaron and Juliet, it's like, oh, okay, this is this is real. And then getting into Sundance and coming to all these festivals, it's it's been it's beautifully life changing for them. Is it kind of hard in some ways? Uh, and I certainly don't mean this to come across as like a sexist comment. Sure. But being a woman trying to structure a story about young boys, mm -hmm. like like trying to kind of get in that headspace of what they would think of. Um, because obviously I'm sure you, you know, your point of view from that age would have been much different totally. than their point of view would have been. So yeah. was that kind of difficult to maybe find a balance there? Um, it's funny because I, for whatever reason, I was, I'm totally opposite. I was not a hellraiser by any means. I was the quiet girl in the back of class who never raised her hands and always very polite and teacher's pet often. And I, I don't know if Lord of the Flies was one of my favorite books yeah. growing up. And I think I wanted to be a little hellion or a little hellraiser, but never had the guts. So living vicariously through these characters, but, um, yeah, I, I don't. I don't know why I have. Maybe I'm an inner 14 year old boy. I don't know what it is, <laughs> but um, I definitely gravitate towards those characters. But my husband was a huge help as well. Yeah. He read a lot of drafts of the script and definitely made me amp up um, some aspects, including like boys loving boobs and porn and stuff like that, which was. Um, yeah, I, I thought there was a real realism to it, and, and especially in those scenes, like when they're looking through the nudie mags mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that. I mean, I, I never did the things that they did yeah. at that age, but there was a relatability there that I thought, yeah, I remember those times in my life, or I remember when I was that age and right. behaving in that way. And, and yeah, you don't, you, know, you don't really think about the consequences of what you're doing as much as you should. Right, you right. Know? And I'm, I'm super in love with, um, I'm in love with good kids doing bad things and figuring out why they're doing it. And the process of casting this film, I met... A lot of kids, like part of that interview process with all of these non-actor boys was just getting to know them a little bit and kind of figuring out what's going on in their lives. Mm -hmm. And um, some of the stories that you hear are just heartbreaking, yeah. you know? And I think one of my intentions, maybe subconsciously with the film, was giving these kids a voice and letting them have a word in, as to what's happening with them and that, you know, oftentimes they're dealing with things way beyond their emotional maturity level and way beyond, you know, the just real adult situations that they tend to deal with in very messy ways. And um, I love exploring that and kind of figuring out why. Yeah. You also have two of my favorite actors in the film. you got Aaron Paul and Juliette Lewis. Yeah. Wonderful people. Uh, very nice people. Yes. Uh, but, but at the same time, so talented. Mm -hmm. um, when did they get involved in this? And, and was, yeah. was that, did you have that decision in casting in terms of were those the ones that you went after for those roles? Or? Yeah, I, I went after Aaron. I'd seen Smashed mm -hmm. in the theater and really loved him and his performance and had seen a couple of episodes of Breaking Bad by that point, but, you know, the bathtub episode was where I had stopped. <laughs> yeah. Um, I can understand that. Yeah, it was a kind of defining episode. And But then after I saw Smashed, my husband's like, you got to go back and watch the rest of the show and I did and I just I thought he was such a dynamic actor and such an honest actor yeah. and immediately like offered him the role and then flew out to Macon Georgia to meet him while he was on Need for Speed and um yeah I just I, I fell in love with him as a human being like James Ponsolt who directed Smashed is the one who sent in the script for us and he was like no he's a really really good person with a really good heart which was important to me because I have five boys who three of which had never acted and I wanted to make this an experience that for their first experience to be one that they would want to continue to make films and plus I have a no 
asshole policy on my <laughs> sets. It's a, good so, idea. it's a good idea. <laughs> you vet everybody to make sure that they're not an asshole first. <laughs> and everybody said he was the furthest thing from one. So, But he was an absolute joy to work with and yeah. so easy and trusting of me. He's got this great gift that anytime he tears up or cries, I can't help. I just lose it. Yeah. There's something about his emotion is so connective you know, when you're watching it as an audience member. And Juliet is, is terrific as well. I love her. Uh, yeah, when did that come about? That came about after Erin, um, I guess she had responded to the script and her agent started calling us about it. So I went out to LA and met with her and she's, uh, she's a fantastic human being and such a fun person to be around. Mm -hmm. And I was excited again for her to play a role that she'd never played before yeah. in a performance that, um, that I hadn't seen before as well. So yeah, she was she was a joy. The last thing I wanted to ask you about was uh, the music plays a big part in this as well. And mm -hmm. and <laughs> like the, the heavy metal, uh, 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 and, and you worked with Lars yes. Ulrich uh, to, to get some of that music. Can you talk about having that be such an important part of the film? And was that, again, was that always kind of in your mindset of I really want this to, you know, the music to play such a big part of, of the storytelling. Yeah, in the short film, the heavy metal is written into the script. Mm -hmm. And so that was a huge element um, very early on with these boys and just their mentality and what's going on inside of them. And so with the feature, same thing, like in the script, there are moments where it's like, this is the music, not, not the specific song, but just sort of the idea and the tone and the feel of it. Um, yeah, so, I, and you know, I, my dream world was to have Metallica score the film, but they're they're busy dudes. Um, but Jeff Nichols, our executive producer, is uh, acquaintances with Lars, who Lars is a huge fan of Jeff Nichols' fans, and er, of his movies, but also Lars is a huge movie buff. Like, he's wonderful taste in films and loves being a part of the film scene. And he after talking to Jeff, called me on the phone while I was sitting at Torchy's Tacos in Austin. It was the most surreal moment in my life where it's like, holy shit, I'm talking to Lars Ulrich. This is so weird. Um, but he was incredibly generous. I mean, he would watch the scenes that I wanted to use music in, and sometimes he would approve them, and sometimes he wouldn't. And um, But he was always so, so nice and wanting to be a part of it. And then he came out to Sundance for our premiere, and... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. It was a dream to work with him. And then all the other bands, like, you know, Slayer got involved, which was super amazing. And then working with um, Relapse Records to get, like, Toxic Holocaust and, you know, down to Pig Destroyer t-shirts. It was, like, it was cool. And The Sword, who are amazing. Yeah. 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 Very, very cool. And your next film is going to be your next, your other short? Film yeah, right? we yeah. had a, a short at Dallas a year ago called Black Metal that I'm expanding into a feature. I was just in Georgia on a road trip trying to figure out which town I want to start setting that one in. So it's fun. It's been, yeah, I love I love what we do. We make movies and <laughs> get to tell stories and live in worlds that we don't normally live in. It's probably safe to say you would anyway, but please bring your next project back here oh, so that we can God, uh, yeah. see that as well. Yeah, I we would, love what you're doing. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It's, Thanks for supporting it. Absolutely. Thanks for supporting all of us. Absolutely. Because indie filmmaking is it's hard, and when audience embrace and then go out into the world, yeah, it's... Thank you for supporting us. The movie is Hellion. Uh, you can check out uh, more information. It's at Facebook at Hellion the Movie, right? That's is that the that button? sounds something right? Something uh, like that. And yeah. then Cat's also on Twitter. Uh, Cat Candler on yeah. Twitter. So yeah. thank you very much yeah. for coming out, Cat. It's thank a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Check out Hellion.